Good to see you here this morning. Hope you'll take a moment and register your attendance. There are registration pads on each pew for you to use for that purpose. There are several announcements in your bulletin. The church office will be closed this week. Uh, Patsy will be in and out taking care of some year-end business, but uh, almost all functions of the church are going to be closed for the holiday week. There will be no early service next Sunday on uh, New Year's Eve. We will follow the same schedule as today and then resume our regular schedule on the week after. Are there other announcements that need to be made? I was getting to that. <laughs> Tonight at 7 o'clock, Christmas Eve, uh, music and candlelight. Come and bring a friend. Uh, we'll be here in the sanctuary 7 to 8 o'clock and uh, encourage you to come back and be part of worship tonight. So we'll stand for the call to worship. Please join me in the call to worship in your bulletin. In a world where many claim not to believe, we call upon you, El Shaddai, God Almighty, to come. In this season of Advent, we wait for your presence to be felt in our lives again. We await the birth of Jesus, the Savior of all, who comes into our lives in a new way. Come, Messiah, come and save us. Lighting of the candle. Let's pray together. Dear God, we pray that our faith may be renewed once again, and may we relive the wonder of your love in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.
Please be seated. If the children will join Rhonda for children's time. I think I'm going to go sit over here. All right. All right. Oh, good job. Good morning. Merry Christmas, everybody. We have some more people coming up. Hi, Miss Maddie, James, Stephen. Okay, I'm going to show you guys a picture, and you guys tell me who this guy is. Who is this guy? Santa Claus. What does he do? What does Santa Claus do? He delivers presents. Yeah, he delivers presents. How many of you have gone to the mall, and you sat on Santa's lap, and you told him what you wanted for Christmas? I know I have. Have you sat on Santa's lap, told him what you wanted? And then you tried really hard to be good, just so you can get that gift, right? You try really, really hard. What happens if you're not good? You don't get any presents? What? Yeah, you get surprised. You get this. You get this big lump of coal. Does a lump of coal sound very nice? I wouldn't want this, would you? No. Guess what? I'm not always a good person. I have not made some good choices. I pretty much have sinned. The Bible tells us in Romans 3.23 that we all sinned and fallen short of God's standard. This means that all of us have been on the naughty list, right? We all probably been on the naughty list. We all deserve this big chunk of charcoal. However, we all know that this isn't about Santa Claus, right? It is about Jesus and his birthday. See, it's all about Jesus. We already know that, right? It's about him. Santa may be, only be able to bring us a lump of coal, to people who aren't very good, but Jesus does something much better. In John 3, 16, we all know that verse, right? It says that God sent his son Jesus to this world to save people. Jesus already knew that we deserve a lump of coal, but he wants to give us something much better than that. He wants to make a trade. So he takes this lump of coal for himself. That means he takes all of our sins, and he gives us eternal life in heaven. This is the greatest gift that anyone can get, right? That's the greatest gift in our presence that we get every year. We need to make sure. So Santa, sorry, I lost my spot. So Santa may give us a lump of coal for the bad choices that we make, but Jesus gives us eternal life. See, here's his cross. He gave us eternal life. We need to make sure that we always remember Jesus and the wonderful gift that he gave us as we celebrate Christmas this year. You ready? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for taking away our sins and giving us eternal life. Happy birthday. We love you. Amen. Now, just because I know you guys are going to get lots of candy, because I get candy from Santa Claus, I'm just going to give you guys a sticker today, a cross sticker, just because this is what it's all about, right? Go ahead, pick out what color you want. Let us pray. O oh, merciful God, we do give you thanks for the gifts that you bestow upon us. Make us aware of the blessings of life. Make us aware of all that you have offered to us in Christ Jesus. As we return these, our gifts, our tithes and offerings to you, let them be a response to your outpouring in our lives. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. <coughs>
us join together in our affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence you shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. be seated. Our scripture today comes from Isaiah chapter 9 verses 2 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of God for the people of God.
We come now to our prayer concerns and celebrations, and as we do so, we invite you to lift up families or situations that we need to be in prayer for. Absolutely. We give thanks for the church choir and their dedication and for all that they offer in worship. We say together, praise be to God. As they say in East Texas, that wasn't half bad. <laughs> we do give thanks. Uh, Cynthia and I, especially for our daughter and her gift that uh, I do not share, but appreciate <laughs> greatly. And we say together, praise be to God. Praise praise be to God. God. Yes, ma'am. We continue to pray for Caroline. Her last name is W-L-E-C-Z-Y-K. <coughs> and uh, we continue to pray for her and her family. Uh, they are still in the hospital and dealing with uh, her illness. And so we, we want to lift them up and say together, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Yes. Her name is Marquetta. For his wife, Marquetta, who is in the Czech Republic and far away, uh, we pray for her and say together, Lord, hear our prayer. Are there others? I have something. Today is Winston Abler's birthday. He's 75. <laughs> Winston's birthday uh, is today, and somebody thinks you're 75, and proud of it. Sissy Swibel's birthday is today as well, and Hope's birthday is two days from now, on the 26th, and John is on the 27th. We've got a lot of birthdays coming up this week. I wonder if anybody has any cake. <laughs> we celebrate life and for the, the lives that these persons have lived and will live in the future, we give thanks to God saying praise be to God. Praise be to God. Are there any others? Pastor Paul? Yes? Everybody has been so wonderful to pray for my son-in-law and he is coming close to the end of his tour of duty in Afghanistan and Iraq and wherever he's been. And about two weeks ago, he was awarded a new bronze star. So please keep praying. He's almost home. Say his name. His name is Brian Burden. He's the Captain Brian Burden that's been on our prayer list for a whole year. Captain Brian Burgey uh, has received the bronze star and will be coming home soon. Uh, and we give thanks for his service and pray for him and his family. And we say together, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. And then we always need to lift up those uh, who are serving in far off countries. Uh, they're stationed around the world on our behalf, representing us and uh, our nation. And so we lift up the men and women of our armed forces and others who serve our nation. And we say together, Lord, hear our prayer. Yes, sir. Um, Kathy is having surgery on the 28th on her foot, and I'd just like to keep her in our prayers as well. Kathy is facing surgery on the 28th, and we lift her up saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Janet Wachick. Janet Wachick. W-A-S-E-K. Wachick. Is that the name? 
Janice was it? We lift up Janice and we say together, Lord, hear our prayer. Are there any others? Then let us be in prayer together and for one another. Gracious God, we are mindful of your presence in our world in a sharp way today. We celebrate your coming to us in the birth of the Christ child. We celebrate and remember this momentous occasion. We sing and we praise you and we offer ourselves into your service because you have come into our world and have made us your own children. We give you thanks that we are here to celebrate this time. As we give thanks to you, we remember those who are ill, those who are dealing with circumstances of life, those who are recovering from illnesses and those who are facing surgeries. We lift them up to you, knowing that you are with them and praying that you will make your, make your presence known in their lives so that they can receive your healing. We pray for those who are far from home, for those who may feel alone even here. We ask that you would fill them with your presence and help us to be the men and women and children and youth that you have called us to be, to be friends who reach out in concern, to be those who include others, to be those who share your love in this season. We pray all of these things in the name of Christ our Lord, who teaches us to say together as we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Almighty God, in you are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Open our eyes that we may see the wonders of your word and give us grace that we may clearly understand and freely choose the way of your wisdom. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The reading today is from Luke, 1st chapter, 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give, him, give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Well, Mary said to the angel, how can this be, since I'm a virgin? And the angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Finally, everything is ready. Don't you feel that way, Brenda? I uh, know. <laughs> For weeks and weeks, we've been talking about preparation and getting ready. Getting ready for the celebration of Christmas. Getting ready to welcome the Christ into our lives in a new way. Getting ready for God to do what God has promised to do in Christ Jesus in our time and in our world. At last, finally, it's all ready. We're ready to celebrate this momentous time, this, this occasion. You know, over the last several weeks, you've noticed that with the symbols of the season, the trees and the wrapping and the lights and the candles... But really, preparations start way back in October. And some of your family preparations probably started then when you started beginning to talk about where do we spend this event or that event? How do we work it out? Are we going to this family house for Thanksgiving and that family house for the Christmas celebration? We schedule those things that we need to help us celebrate. You know, there are people who celebrate the season of Christmas by scheduling all their friends to get together at their house for a sound of music sing-along? <laughs> really and truly. We had a group that drove all the way to the, the Woodlands Cynthia Mitchell Pavilion one time to do that as a way of kind of kicking it off because that was part of their celebration. There are those who get together and, and go and they see the Nutcracker because that's a family tradition. There are those who gather in school auditoriums and cafeterias and watch the children's programs as part of their family traditions for a while, and then we see them again in different stages of life. There are family preparations that happen that have to do with the church and those that have to do outside the church. But all of this is getting ready, and now finally all is ready. What you may or may not understand is that as we consume those events, most of us who are sitting out in the audience or in the congregation at a different event, 
we don't realize the anxiety that goes into putting those things together. Some of the folks behind me know the anxieties that go into that, one in particular. But most of the time, those who come to celebrate think everything went off without a hitch, and they don't know any better, and that's a good thing. But as a pastor, I can tell you that church celebrations from time to time, the, the oddest things come up as a hitch or as something that, that happens in the life of the congregation. One year, as we were in the midst of a, a nativity scene, I heard a gasp. And it was a gasp like, oh no, something is terribly wrong. And so I turned to the woman beside me and I said, what is it? And she said, one of the wise men is wearing red tennis shoes. <laughs> It'll be okay, I assured her. And you know, not one person other than her noticed or said anything about the red tennis shoes. On another occasion, we searched high and low. We went into all the closets, into the attic, all over the church property, and we could not find the manger that had been used for, people thought, a thousand years. One of the dads cut limbs out of one of his trees, put it together, brought it up there, and it looked like the manger that Jesus was laid in the very first time. And then he says to me, I hope no one looks too close because I had to use nails to hold it together. But I took some binders twine and wrapped it around so it looks like it's tied together. I thought... What a wonderful gift, and he's worried that it's not quite right because they didn't have nails in the time of Jesus to hold it together. Nobody noticed. Why didn't they notice? I think they didn't notice because in the midst of this celebration, God brings together the elements and the components of the telling of his story in such a way that the story takes precedence over everything else. It's a simple and powerful story of the birth of Jesus that makes everything else that we're anxious about just kind of fade into the background. And it really doesn't matter if one of the shepherds is wearing red shoes. It's a story that was put together by God and told by God. A simple and powerful story of how God prepared Israel to receive a Savior. He prepared them in some ways that we look at and marvel at. For the people turned away from God and they were sinful and they, they followed false gods. And God corrected them. He corrected them by sending them prophets. He corrected them by sending them adversaries. He corrected them and prepared them for salvation by sending them into exile out of the Holy Land. He prepared them by allowing them to return and then even live under Roman occupation. You know, people are not in search of a Savior who think they have the world by the tail. People who think they are in charge of the world have no need for salvation because they think they have everything right. But God prepared the people of Israel just as he prepares us by showing us our need for this saving grace that comes in the child Jesus. He prepares us by allowing us to make decisions good or bad and to learn from the consequences of those decisions. He prepares us by never being too far away and always within our reach, but never in our way. God prepares us as he prepared the people to receive a Savior by allowing life to unfold and being ready to be a part of that life at the first instant that we need him. God prepared Israel. It's a simple and powerful story of a people who rejected God and moved away from God and did everything they could to depend upon themselves until they realized that they could do nothing apart from God. That when they turned and they were prepared, He sent to them 
this blessed child, this Messiah, this Savior of the world. It's a simple and powerful story about a man who is preparing for a new life and a new marriage to a young woman. And he is caught up in an event of all history. He is required to take the woman he is engaged to and to go to the town of his ancestors and be registered, counted by the Romans so that they could levy the proper tax. It's the first census in history conducted by the Romans and treating people as, as well as numbers for the first time. You think you're the first generation to be treated as a number? No. The Romans numbered everybody. They counted them. They taxed them accordingly. And Joseph is there. In the midst of all that is going on, it's a simple and powerful story of this man who is caught up in this action of history and is just trying to start a new life, who's visited by an angel and says, the woman you're about to marry is going to have a child. And it's going to be the child of the Most High God and it will be the Savior of all people. So you take this woman with you. And when he wakes up, Jesus, Joseph faithfully does as he's instructed by the messenger of God. It's about how Joseph understands through God's vision how God reveals Joseph's plan, Joseph's part in God's plan for the salvation of the world. And Joseph faithfully accepts that part in that story. It's a simple and powerful story of a young woman who is preparing to be married and to start her new life who's visited by an angel. And she's instructed by this angel that she's going to give birth to a child who will be the savior of the nations. And she does not understand and she cannot comprehend because she has never been with a man. She is a virgin. She wants to be that for her husband as they marry and begin their life together. And the angel says to her, this child will be holy. It's a simple and powerful story about her faithful response to that situation. Here I am, servant of the Lord. Let it be according to your will. You see, there is nothing that can happen in the world to take God off task of offering salvation to all people. The birth of Jesus is a, a simple yet powerful story of a child born into poverty and relative obscurity in a part of the world that was not that important at the time. It's a story of a child whose birth would probably have gone unnoticed in such a commotion as this census taking where there was great crowds in every city of any significance. And yet that birth among probably many other births that night, was heralded by a chorus of angels to shepherds out in the countryside who dropped what they were doing to faithfully respond to what God had revealed to them and then to share that story. There is nothing that can get in the way of God reaching out to God's people and offering salvation to those who understand the need for that salvation. Not a Roman emperor who decides to round up people in groups and count them. Not the thought of what people would say when these two young people got married and were expecting a child almost instantly. Not the thought of the gossip they would face or the questions they would be, would be put to them. Not the commotion of everything going on. Not even when a boy wears red tennis shoes in the production of it a thousand years later. Nothing can distract from the story of God's salvation coming to people who understand the need for that salvation. God is prepared and ready to offer all the world redemption through Jesus Christ. And God is prepared and ready to offer you 
in this moment, in this day, in this place, redemption in the name of Jesus Christ. That's the power of that story. That's the power of that name that we celebrate that is above all names that causes us to bow our heads and to kneel when we hear it. That is the power of what God has done and God will continue to do in the lives of men and women and children and youth through the ministries of this church and other churches in our community and churches around the world. Because that's the power of a simple story about how God will not be denied an opportunity to speak into your life. As we prepare to sing our closing this morning, we invite you to think about how God's redemption has come into your life and to celebrate that as you sing this song. To give thanks to God for the birth of the Savior and for the way the Savior has come into your heart to give you rebirth as a child of God. And if you've not done that yet, we invite you to think about how you will take your next steps to invite the Christ child into your life and to take advantage of this offering that God makes to you so that you might walk as a child of this light and that you might be a child of God. Let us stand and sing together. You are the church of Jesus Christ. You celebrate his coming into the world. You are redeemed by his coming into the world. Go and serve him. Go and share his love. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.